Planet Dolan. From Andy Warhol's fan film of a comic book hero to a real life hero chasing down trucks to save films, we look at 15 incredible lost films we eventually recovered. Number 15. Batman Dracula. What? Batman fought Dracula? Or is Dracula? This all sounds very, very confusing, but what do you expect from Andy Warhol? Shot as part of an art exhibition, the film predated the 60s Batman television series, making it the first known film to feature a campy as hell caped crusader. The film was thought lost until scenes were shown in the documentary Jack Smith and the Destruction of Atlantis, showing Smith as the Batman himself. Meaning, he was probably sitting in his garage the whole time, but hey, if I made an unauthorized Batman film, I'd probably bury it too. Please don't go looking for it. Number 14. Too Much Johnson. Ah, oh, 1930s silent cinema. Will your vaguely sexual puns ever stop? Well, they will if we lose all the film prints. Too Much Johnson was the work of the then 23-year-old Orson Welles, who was just a few years away from making Citizen Kane. So how could such a prolific director's work get lost for 80 years? Well, the film was actually meant to be screened in between parts of a stage show as an early multimedia experience, but technical difficulties led to the film portion being shelved and the stage production being nonsensical without the film half. Too Much Johnson was found in Italy in 2013. Along with the film print, hey, I can make puns too, 1930s. Take that, you silent bastards. Number 13. Wake in Fright, an awesomely dark film about the horrors of living in the Australian outback that managed to vanish like a foreign backpacker. Until 2009, the only known print was deemed too damaged to be used to restore the film, so the original editor decided to go on an epic quest to find the film negative, which he did, only after a decade of searching. Restoring and re-editing the film, it was re-released in cinemas in 2009, where it won critical acclaim, which is fortunate, considering the negative was found in a can marked for destruction. It's clear that someone didn't like it. Number 12. Wings. Surely the first film to win an Academy Award for Best Picture would have been locked up in a vault from day one, right? No. For fuck's sake guys, you had one job. How such a massive hit of a film was left to rot away to nothing is a mystery, but I'd say it's probably because, well, people back then didn't really care. Except for one person in Paris who had archived the film in their vault and once found, a new print was quickly duplicated. At least someone had the sense to think, hey, maybe this will be important to keep, rather than, oh man, film burns so good and I'm all out of firewood. Number 11. Double Confession. Okay, so a film where the first Doctor has Peter Lorre as a psycho henchman somehow managed to disappear from the face of the earth. The British film about a man hunting for his wife's murderer was fairly standard fare for 1950, leading it to fall through the cracks. Hell, if a Best Picture winner can go missing, then an average crime thriller has no chance. Last being seen on TV in 1960, until it hit the BFI's 75 Most Wanted films. I guess that triggered someone to find it in their attic. Poor William Hartnell. The BBC wiped half his Doctor Who episodes and now his movies disappear. Must be the meddling monk at work. And about five people are going to get that joke. Number 10. Deranged. Yet another horror film based on the life of Ed Gain, except unlike Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this film tried to be more realistic. Being the most accurate to reality when it was made didn't stop people from misplacing the film for 20 years, leaving no one who didn't know how to pick up a book clueless on Ed Gain's corpse furniture. The film showed up eventually in Florida for the film to be released on VHS. Then again, maybe the film went missing because nobody wanted to be the guy holding onto a film that had the subtitle Confessions of a Necrophile. Number 9. Richard Burton's Hamlet. Well, I'll give these guys credit, it's pretty easy to lose a film when the director contractually orders all prints to be destroyed after screening. The filmed version of the stage production was screened for only two days before being pulled and thrown into the trash as per instructions. But pesky Richard Burton thought, fuck that shit, and hid a print in his garage. And that's exactly where the film was found years later after the actor died. Number 8. Dracula, the Spanish version. Filmed side by side with Bela Lugosi's version, this film actually turned out better than the version we all know, and then was promptly thrown in the dump. Using the same sets as the English version and shooting nights while the English version would shoot in the day, the film carries a darker atmosphere and more artistic freedom than its counterpart, leading horror aficionados to name it the better film of the two. But the studio didn't give a fuck about that and shelved the film in a dark basement until someone found the print in the 70s. Talk about being brought back from the dead, right? Number 7. Bun Rai Story, a major award-winning South Korean movie that was seemingly lost for around 30 years? Hmm. The North Koreans were probably involved somehow. Bun Rai Story deals with rape, impotence and madness, with the titular Bun Rai being caught in a love triangle that ends with murder and Bun Rai going insane. It's a feel-good film? The film hasn't been shown much outside its native Korea since its rediscovery in 2009. Hell, at the moment it doesn't even have an IMDb score. Even after it's been found, it seems like this film is still lost. Number 6. 
The Flying Doctor, a film that has a more interesting story about how it was saved than its actual content. Well, that could only be The Flying Doctor. This 1930s Australian film about outback doctors who fly out to remote properties went fairly unnoticed on release and sat in a film studio vault for so long that the studio had gone bust and the building demolished. The contents of the vault were thrown into a truck to be taken to the dump, but a local office worker saw the truck filled with film cans drive past and ran out of work to give chase, flagging them down and saving the day for all. And I'm assuming he was fired for running out of work to chase down some random truck. The only thing that could make this story better is if it was a more interesting film that was found in the back of that truck. Number five. Zipped. Who doesn't love Charlie Chaplin and his slapstick? Well, the people who took a blowtorch to this Great War propaganda film, for one. The seven minute short that used outtakes from other Chaplin films featured a German Zeppelin attack on London with early uses of stop motion animation. It's believed the film was only shown in Egypt before disappearing for close to a century. In 2009, Morris Park purchased a random film can on eBay for $5 that contained the only known copy in existence. Now that's a bargain. Too bad when he tried to sell it for $160,000, no one wanted to buy it. Number four. Incubus, a crazy black and white horror film shot in a language almost no one speaks, starring the one and only William Shatner. How could anyone lose that? The art house horror using Esperanto for its dialogue was presumed to have been lost in a fire by a company that was in charge of storing it, which the producer only found out when they tried to get a copy for a VHS release. But again, thanks to France, a copy turned up in their archives in 1996. Come on, are you telling me that for 30 years only the French thought a film that ends with Shatner staring down a goat would be important? I'm disgusted in you all. Number three. Shadows. John Cassavetti's lost independent film classic had two versions that existed, with the first essentially disappearing from history. Cassavetes was on record saying he lost track of what happened to the first version, possibly donating it to a film school, but the truth was much more interesting. Turns out the film was left on a New York subway train, taken to a lost and found department, purchased by the owner of a second hand shop, sat in the shop until it closed down, and then stored in his Florida attic. Eventually the shop owner's daughter found the film and gave it to film professor Ray Carney, who had been searching for the film since the 80s. Whew. And after all that, you still can't see it because the Cassavetes estate are in a legal battle for who owns the film. Great. Number two. Metropolis. One of the most influential sci-fi films of all time has been missing for most of the time it's been inspiring people. Fritz Lang's classic was hated by almost everyone at the time of release, including H.G. Wells, which gives reason as to why the film was swiftly filed under films no one gives a shit about, leading to the movie being recut and large sequences being tossed out. Meaning that while the film wasn't totally lost, it was only a shell of the film that premiered. It wasn't until a lost print from Argentina, along with copies from New Zealand, allowed for around 98% of the film to be restored. And it's too bad H.G. Wells' ghost now hates you all. Number one. The Passion of Joan of Arc. Considered one of the greatest films ever made since its release in 1928, it's hard to believe the bad luck that fell on this film. Premiering in Paris, the film was heavily censored by the French government and the Archbishop of Paris, who pissed off the director to no end. But hey, it's alright, we still have the original cut. Oh wait, no, the lab just burned it. With no original, the director created a new cut using rejected takes of the censored scenes, but then that cut was lost to a lab fire. Although God was apparently trying to stop this film from being seen, in a seemingly divine miracle, the original cut was found in a janitor's closet, in a mental institution, in Oslo, somewhere the film was never recorded being shipped to. Clearly there is a God. That's it for this countdown. And have a go! Did you enjoy the video? That's fantastic! Did you know we still have a gaming channel? Collaborative, it's for playing at all, and come look at us as we play some video games! Like animation? Have some questions about life and the universe you need answered? Come check out Super Planet Dolan. Danger Dolan and I will answer your life questions. Links are down below.